worth 15 points, 10 for the middle ring, and he's going to pull that harness, and here he goes for the drop. A spectacular drop for Ripper, unbelievable. He hit the water hard, but he looks pleased, gives a thumbs up again, and let's look at it again, see how many points he picked up. A missile, there he goes, a projectile as he hits the center ring. 10 points for Milwaukee in Parasail. Well, as the bullseye event continues on, we see Breeze up there. She's our hard body representing uh, the Detroit Tiger Fish, and she's gonna make her turn and pull the harness and get ready, see if she can better rip her. Can she do it? She lets go of the harness just over, and there it goes right there. Unbelievable, look at that drop. She came down almost head first. She signals that she's okay. Can't really see how many points she got. I'll have to look at the replay here. Here she comes, gets her feet right in the middle, and then face plants. What a great jump, and she ties 10 points there. With a splash, the action is underway from Malibu Beach in Southern California. It's Beach Clash. with your host, David Hirsch, and Allison Armitage. Referee and U.S. Olympian, Sherry Howard. And the Beach Clash Hard Bodies. Ripper, Sandy, Zuma, and Breeze. And I'm David Hirsch. Welcome. We're your hosts for Beach Clash, a thrilling hour of strenuous competition as two teams compete for a grand prize of $10,000 and a Hawaiian holiday. Now, we've just seen a demonstration of what's to come with our first event, Bullseye. This show is about surf-savvy athletes testing their abilities on sand and in the sea, and assisting our skilled contestants are our own Beach Clash hard bodies. Let's meet our two teams. Competing for the Detroit Tiger Fish, we have Melissa Cross and Sean Graham. They're paired with hard bodies Zuma and Breeze. And taking care of business for the Milwaukee Manta Rays are Brenda Kincaid and Chris Brophy. They'll be competing with Ripper and Sandy. Looking at the scoreboard following our first event, Bullseye, our teams are tied as both the Detroit Tigerfish and the Milwaukee Manta Rays pick up 10 points. Up next, the hot air climb. As we see, our contestants are warming up and getting in the competitive spirit for this next event. And still to come on Beach Clash, human rubber bands face bungee ball. Swimmers need to apply for our next event. It's the Hot Air Climb, brought to you by 1-800-COLLECT. You've got to be swift and agile to win this contest. Well, as you can see, a hot air balloon is tethered in the middle of our Beach Clash set. Our male team members are waiting 30 yards offshore. At the start of the game, our hard bodies will paddleboard to the shore and tag their female teammates. She will then run to the balloon, climb a rope ladder, and pull a cord, releasing a banner. The male contender will then swim to shore and tag her again. She will rush to the rope ladder and release a second banner. The first team to release both their banners wins the game and picks up the 10 points. If it's a shutout, the team earns an additional 5 points. Everyone's set to go, so let's begin. There is Sherry Howard with the flag. She lets it drop, and there's Suma on his paddleboard. He is for the Detroit team. And, of course, Milwaukee's Ripper, his hard body. He's great on that paddleboard, isn't he? Uh, That's right, David. He is a surfer, and he's got a lot of upper body strength, which is going to help him. I look at him, and he's really got a head start on Zuma already. Yeah, he's got a great lead, and he's hopefully going to catch this wave. If he's smart, he knows just how to do it. He's going to ride it in. Look at that. And he's got a great wave, and there's Zuma. Not as quick on this portion, but we can see maybe they can catch up a little bit later. Here comes Ripper. He's just about to tag Brenda, who's waiting. And Brenda, of course, with Milwaukee, as she makes her way up to that hot air balloon climb. She needs to climb to the top, pull the banner. Of course, when she pulls the banner, that will signal 
the, her other teammate, Christopher, to jump off. And here you see Zuma. And look at how fast Brenda's made it up that rope. And of course, she's called the banner to signal Christopher to start his uh, open water swim. He, of course, doesn't get the paddle board like the hard body does. He has to swim in the open water, which is a pretty tough thing to do. Yeah, and there you see him now swimming in. And uh, Ripper, of course, giving Brenda a great lead. And here we see Melissa. Now, she's struggling with the rope. She obviously is not uh, as good of a climber as Brenda, although she's giving it a heck of an effort there. And there we see an excellent shot of Chris as he swims in, tries to catch a wave to get to shore to tag Brenda once again. And uh, there we see Melissa is still struggling a little bit with that rope, a very difficult rope to climb, Allison. Yeah, she's really having a tough time, but you need a lot of upper body strength for that rope. You've got to get the knot, pull yourself up, get your feet on the knot below, and push yourself up. And she just doesn't seem to be able to do it. And there you can see she can't even reach the, uh, the hoop. Unfortunately, she might have to try and get up to the next knot. And there we see Chris coming out of the water to tag uh, Brenda uh, so they can pick up another five points in this hot air climb event. And Sherry Howard, our ref watching, Bob and here we cut back to Melissa we see her there and she's, and she's trying to get a shutout and thank God she made it that's there, great she got it five uh, five points uh, for Milwaukee and now they're gonna try and double that up with Penn and they do and there's Brenda pulls that second banner down Milwaukee takes a big win here on the hot air climb and there's Brenda very excited and sharing her excitement with her teammates a well-deserved win because she almost got the shutout and won an extra five points never mind it's ten points for the Milwaukee Manta Rays and here's a slow motion of her pulling the banner. Great style. I'm here with Chris, Brenda, and our hard body Ripa. We won an incredible 10 points for their team, the Milwaukee Manor Raids. You all work w very well as a team. You were great on the board, great swimming, and you look like you were born to climb a rope. Well, those presidential physical fitness days, climbing ropes in eighth grade, I think helped. But Chris, couldn't have done it without your swim. Oh, God. Awesome. <laughs> great effort. Congratulations. Brenda Kincaid, who helped secure victory for the manor rays in the hot air climb, looked like a natural. Let's find out what makes her tick. I wanted to be on Beach Clash because I love competition and it keeps me on my toes. And uh, I get to meet a lot of interesting people. My biggest fantasy is instead of people coming up to me on the street and saying you look like Jodie Foster or Michelle Pfeiffer, for them to come up to me and say you look like Brenda Lee Kincaid. I work out with weight. I uh, have an extra cycle at home. I love doing mountain bike. Um, just got done hiking the Grand Canyon with a 30-pound pack on my back, which was really intense. The Milwaukee Manta Rays grabbed 10 points in the hot air climb and took the lead over the Detroit Tiger Fish following our second event. You need plenty of upper body strength for this wet relay event. The name of the game? Hill Climb. Well, here's how it works. The course consists of three foam padded hills. Then they're covered with vinyl, and then they're soaked wet. There's pull ropes at the top of each apex right here, so the players can pull themselves over the top. The first team over these slippery slopes and across the finish line wins 10 points. I am wet. You know, 150 seconds is all they get to do this one. They're ready. I'm wet. Let's do it. It's the hill climb. There's Sherry Howard. She's just about to blow the whistle for the start of the hill climb, and there they go. They're off. We have Sandy for Milwaukee in green. Breeze climbing for the Detroit Tiger Fish in red. And look at these ladies go over the hills. Great technique. Neck and neck. Both sliding down. It's awfully wet and very difficult to get over, Allison. Yeah, it's very difficult. But yeah, the water on the plastic there just makes it awfully slippery. And there goes Breeze back. And Breeze tags Melissa. And Sandy tags Brenda. And here go our contenders over the hills. Brenda gets over first. And there goes Melissa. She shoots down. And getting over that second one's very difficult because you don't have to get to, you know, run up and get a running start, so it's very difficult. Well, Melissa tried, and it didn't work for her, so she's trying to just reach for the rope and pull herself up, which, of course, takes a lot of upper body strength. Let's see if she can do it. She's having a tough time, but Brenda has gotten over all three, and she's putting this Milwaukee team in a good position as Ripper, one of the best at this event that there is. He's right over the first two quickly, and he's headed to third, and he is now passed over Melissa, who's really struggling on this third hill. Well, Melissa, the Detroit Tigerfish is really displaying a great deal of heart, David. I mean, she may be having a tough time, but like any true athlete, she's not going to quit. Absolutely. There goes Chris, and Chris is going to wrap it up here for Milwaukee. He comes back for the Manor Race tags, and that'll be it. That's all she wrote in the hill climb. Milwaukee takes the win. And Milwaukee celebrating their blowout victory. And here's the instant replay. Ripper, of course, flying over the hills. He's just a pro at this event. Look at him go. 
And Melissa displaying such effort, showing everyone at home how difficult beach clash competition can really be. Here we are with the winning Milwaukee Manta Rays and a, a, an incredible start, you know. Yeah. Sandy, you got them out to a great start right over that first jump. Yeah, sure did. Breeze and I were, though, in a close tie, though, in the yeah, beginning. Was, Milwaukee's the winner here. Congratulations. Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. A remarkable performance by the Milwaukee Manta Rays, and they gain 10 points in the hill climb and pull in front of the Detroit Tigerfish. Our team scores now stand at 30 for the Manta Rays and 10 points for the Tigerfish. Coming up. Our contestants battle the surf in Riptide and race to become king of the raft as the competition continues on Beach Clash. Our next event is a wet and wild ocean race we call Riptide. Speed and balance are crucial in this contest. Hard bodies from our two teams will drive wave runners pulling a circular raft with a fellow teammate aboard. The raft is called a tubey. It has two handles which the rider will hold on to while remaining in a prone position. Except if the rider falls off. <laughs> and then he or she must reboard the tubey in order to finish this race. The winner earns 10 points. Our two teams are in place and ready to rip. So let's go to the races. Well, Riptide is underway, and you see the Milwaukee team at the bottom of your screen in green. There's Christopher there being pulled on the tubey, and at the top of the screen, the Detroit Tigerfish team, and on the tubey is Sean, and what a race this is. A fun race to watch, and, and a lot more fun to be in it. Uh, anyone at home would be envious of these people going around and around and around. Kind of gets me a little bit seasick, Allison. <laughs> well, David, <laughs> you really do get tossed around, and, and it's a lot, it's really very difficult to stay on and, and hold on. Absolutely. You see Sean coming around right now on the Tiger Fish, and he gets completely thrown, and they miss a buoy, it looks like to me. There's Sean floating in the water. Now, that means that Zuma for the Tiger Fish is going to have to go back, or he'll have an infringement. He'll have to go back and pick up that buoy. First pick up Sean, though, hopefully. <laughs> well, David, according to referee Sherry Howard, um, she just singled, but both teams have missed buoys. So uh, whoever gets to the finish line first really will win the event. Is that right? Both teams have missed buoys, and here we go. It looks like Ripper's going to try right now to go back around with Christopher and pick it up so he can have a, a clean race. The key here, of course, if you make a mistake or miss a buoy, is to go back around. That's what we're seeing now. And recapture that buoy as to come in clean. And look at the ride here, Allison, that Christopher's getting. The key here, hold on for your life because it's a wide open ocean. Yeah, it really looks like Ripper is going to uh, dump Christopher again, and, and sometimes it really pays to take a little bit more time to get around those buoys. Yeah, some people can see this and say, why aren't they going faster? But I'll tell you, when you get around, it, it just whips them to such a degree that uh, I, I, I'm ready to go out there myself. Look at this. <laughs> Look how quickly. <laughs> it's, it, if, it's a very confusing event, but I'll tell you, nonetheless, one of the more fun events you'll see here on Beach Clash, and as they come to the finish line, you see Ripper cross first there and let's take a look again unbelievable how quickly they get tossed look at sean going there in the replay what a spell well we just caught up with the winners of riptide the milwaukee manta rays a very interesting interesting race we got chris here and of course our hard body ripper sherry howard our referee called this one an incredible race you both had dual infractions but you were the first over the finish line to win now that first turn did you know that he was off and when you were trying to catch up the turn well i saw that the uh, other guy had lost his rider <laughs> so i figured if we could just hang in there and cut the course we'd win the race and they end up doing it now listen ripper when you tried to come back the first time did you know you went around the wrong way i had no idea dave i just um too many circles i guess i kind of got lost i just tried to finish the course as best as possible and uh, i knew the other guy had fallen off the raft you might have had an infringement i knew i had an infringement and i just tried to get to the finish line the quickest milwaukee's the winner here congratulations chris brophy has shown us he knows his way around water he also knows a great deal about frisbee golf Well, uh, frisbee golf is a relatively new sport. It was developed in the 70s, and it's played the same way golf would be, except instead of hitting a ball into a hole, you throw a frisbee, or actually an aerodynamic disc, into a basket. One of my biggest passions nowadays is snowboarding. Unfortunately, you can only do it in the wintertime, unless you're somewhere cool like Alaska. But uh, that's something I like to do a whole lot. If I could have one real cool adventure, it would be to be dropped out of a helicopter on top of a glacier somewhere out in Canada or something and just snowboard all the way down. 
The Milwaukee Manta Rays rally in Riptide, pick up 10 points, and widen their lead over the Detroit Tiger Fish. This next game is called Volley Smash, and our contestants are warming up as we speak. Well, Allison, Volley Smash is your ordinary volleyball game, except for a couple things. There's a three-minute time limit, and it's on an airbag court. So it's the ultimate balancing act. And each team is allowed one 10-second timeout during the match. The first team to reach 11 points, or the team with the most points within three minutes, whoever serves, is the team that wins the game. Ultimate California Day. We're ready. The teams look ready. Let's get started. Well, referee Sherry Howard says play ball, and there's Chris, and he's serving for the Manta Rays. Over to the Tiger Fish, and they pick up their first point, one for the Manta Rays. And Chris going to continue to serve here on this air mattress court. Zuma knocking it back. Brenda sets it up for Sandy, and Sandy knocks it out. And so we've got a tie score, 1-1. Now Sean serving for the Detroit Tiger Fish. Chris to Ripper over the net. Back to Sean. And Breeze. He gets a good set there. Sean knocks it back over. And Ripper from Milwaukee. This is a great volley they got going here. Sean back over to Breeze. And, oh, he tried to get down there, dig. And you can see how difficult it is on this air mattress to dig in. You got to time it right. Milwaukee gets the point. Now back over. And it looks like Milwaukee's going to get another point here. And Chris continues to serve. Zuma smashing it over for the Tiger Fish. Ripper responds over to Sean. And I think Breeze gets hold of it there. Zuma pushes it back to Chris. And uh, it's going back and forth. we got a good long volley here. Melissa hits it. And look at that diving try to save there for Brenda. But she doesn't get it. And that point is going to go to the Detroit team. And here's Sean serving for the Detroit Tiger Fish. And of course, we can notice the clock winding down. We're almost at the halfway point. There's Chris setting for Ripper. Ripper gets it over. And Breeze is going to set this point, and Ripper runs in, spikes, but it lands just out of bounds as Sherry rules. We got 3-3, three, three, and the serve, of course, right back with Sean as he knocks it over again and into the net, unfortunately. So point to Milwaukee. Remember, you don't have to have possession to get a point here at Volley Smash. Christopher Brophy serving for the Milwaukee Manta Rays. Milwaukee getting some good teamwork there, setting together, getting the shot over. Breeze now sets. Zuma slams, and Brenda cannot stop it, although they really tried there. A great, great spike by Zuma, and serve to Detroit. And the ball's back over, and they're setting it up. You can see they get these serves off real quickly, Allison, because they are going against the clock there, and there's another point for the Milwaukee team. 55 seconds left in this event, or the first one to 11 will win this one. The score, 5-4, to four, the Manta Rays leading, but they better watch out. The Tiger Fish are closing in. Well, now 6-4. to four. They're, uh, Got that other one off, and they hit another one. They smash it. It looks like Sean bumped into his own teammate. Now 7-4. The Manta Rays on a small roll here as they get it over. Sandy sets it up. Breeze now setting it for Detroit. Back over to Ripper, who gets it back over to Detroit. And here goes Detroit. A nice shot by Sean. Saved by Milwaukee. And back over to Breeze. we got a long volley here. Oh, Chris no. just wasn't thinking. He Not at all. He misses this. Seven to five, Detroit serving, and look at this, 11 seconds left, and uh, they pick up another point, seven, six. This one is going to go down to the wire, possibly sudden death. The point is up in the air. Milwaukee gets it back over, and Detroit really needs this point. Big spike, and Chris tries to get it in, and Brenda can't save it, seven, seven, and this is going to sudden death, Allison. Well, obviously, it will be the uh, first person, first team to win the final point, to win the game. Exactly, and they are getting ready here to go in to that sudden death overtime. This looks like too much fun. Maybe they'll let us jump around afterwards. And there's the serve by Detroit. Ripper gets it up. Crucial point here. They set on Detroit. Breeze sets it back up. Zuma gets over. Chris from Milwaukee holds it in. Ripper gets it over the net. And it too far loses the point. And Detroit picking up a big win in a very tough game volley smash. Eight to seven, the winners, Detroit Tigerfish. Well, Melissa, Sean, and Breeze and Zuma, the Detroit Tiger Fish, coming off an incredible, incredible sudden death win. You guys, how did you do it? I don't know. We just jammed. They just jammed. Zuma, I got to ask you, a sudden death. This is a rare event around here. How do you prepare differently for this? Uh, we just train really hard, and uh, we always practice sudden death uh, situations, and we did it. We did it good. We did it Wonderful. Well. And they did it. Detroit Tiger Fish. Now let's go up and check the scoreboard. The Detroit Tiger Fish beat the Milwaukee Manta Rays 8-7 in a great, exciting sudden death volley smash, but still lag behind those Manta Rays 47-18. Our players are poised and ready to do battle. 
Bumpers and Bungee Ball. And later on our show, in Beach Bout, as the competition heats up on Beach Clash. Welcome back to Beach Clash. And the battle between the Detroit Tiger Fish and the Milwaukee Manta Rays. This game is called Bungee Ball, and it's kind of like... It's kind of like yo-yo basketball, <laughs> and you know why? Because it's on an inflatable court right here, two identical lanes going down, and the contestants, well, they're, they're strapped into harnesses, and they have bungee cords attached to their backs. And they race down the court and attempt to get the ball into the freestanding basketball hoops at the end of each lane. Of course, the idea is to let go of that ball, get the shot off before the bungee cord yanks them all the way back to the starting line. Now, they get 30 seconds to play this shot, and... And they get hit in the head. <laughs> and our teams are almost ready, so let's play ball. And there's the whistle by Sherry Howard. Brenda and Melissa up first, and Brenda right out of the gate scores two points. She's uh, quite a shooter, that Brenda. That's right. Now, our contenders must remember that they have to touch the back wall before they can uh, run forward and try and shoot a hoop again. Yeah, not much trouble doing that, actually, because that bungee's whipping them back there. <laughs> that it is. And there goes Brenda again shooting, and, uh, and Melissa as well in red in the far lane. They're really trying to get those balls in there, but being pulled back, and Brenda gets another score for nothing. And there she goes again. She is on fire for Milwaukee. Brenda's a great shot, and time is up. 6-0 Milwaukee. Take a look at this in slow motion as Brenda gets that ball in the hoop, and uh, and hopefully I avoid getting hit in the head. And there's Sherry blowing the whistle for the men. And Sean out of the gate quickly. He's got his work cut out for him. He's a good shooter. He's already got two points on the scoreboard, and now four. That's right. He's picking it up real quickly here. And look at that. He just Anything he puts up is going in, and Chris here struggling for the manta rays but he just got one in so eight to six clock counting down only nine seconds left look how quickly sean's shooting and these guys are determined the bungee cords are get pulling them back much harder because of the force they're putting in going down to the wire here milwaukee maintains their lead though unfortunately great shooting though by sean but 10 to 8 final score take a look at sean there allison he's got that ball up he shot three in a row but not enough to put them in the lead from the Milwaukee Manta Rays, who won 10 to 8. Yeah. Congratulations. But I noticed it was close. They were catching up. But, Brenda, your amazing six points held you on for the win. Oh, God, I feel great. I thought my shooting was off. <laughs> yeah. I guess it was a little on today. She's the girl. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she did a great job. Held us in there against that red team. She did your four. <laughs> yes, she did. Congratulations. And let's go look at the scoreboard. Well, the Milwaukee Manta Rays squeaked by with a 10-8 victory over the Detroit Tiger Fish in bungee ball. Our next competition is Beach Bout. Well, the game takes place in this pool, and our contestants will stand on the tether pole facing each other about two feet apart. They'll try to knock each other into the water using a foam baton. Each knockdown is worth five points. Our contestants are ready. Well, Beach Bout's just about underway here. Melissa in red for the Tiger Fish, Brenda in green for the Manta Rays, and look how carefully and tenderly they're walking out a very slippery, slippery plank. And there they go at it. They're clashing back and forth, and Melissa gets the worst of it. She's down five points for the Manta Rays, and that brings up our hard bodies. Yep, our female hard bodies, Breeze and Sandy, go at it, and definitely Breeze hits the water first, so Sandy picks up five points now, for the Manta Rays. There you go, Ripper now going against Sean in a change, and <laughs> he just belts it. And that's it, Sean falls right to the water, and that's another five Five points for the Manta Rays, and here comes Zuma. Chris staggering. He looks like he's going to go down, and he sure does. And there's Zuma, triumphant. Picks up five points, not totally shut out, but the Manta Rays win 15-5. And here you can see slow motion replay as Sandy knocking Breeze over. And there she goes down. Manta Rays win this beach bout. Well, fresh out of the beach ball pool, I have Ripper with the Manta Rays, and I have Sean here with the Tiger Fish. This was an interesting matchup. You guys decided to match by size instead of hard body to hard body. Yeah, exactly. Um, I saw Sean was going for uh, his team. I wanted to match Chris up with our uh, with their hard body so we could have an even match, you know? So uh, we thought about it a little bit, and that's what we went with. Now, you saw him coming after you. I thought I'd How did this one go? How did this go I down? I did it with speed. I was going to try to come in there and get a couple quick shots at him, maybe throw him off. But I think the, the speed thing didn't work. My feet slipped off, and I did the ugliest split of all times. And the man took me. But we'll get you in the next event. It's perfect, though. 15 points for the Manta Ray team. Sean Graham took quite a fall in beach bout. Now let's look at him up close and personal. 
I would probably consider myself an extremist. I've always been since I was a kid. I, I enjoy the rush, and I guess it's that you come real close to death, which makes it so exciting. I, most of my stuff is high falls, and I do a lot of water stuff like that, high diving, jet skiing, water skiing, barefoot skiing, all that kind of stuff. The ultimate challenge, I think, for a stuntman would probably be something that no one else can do. It makes you the elite, the something that people are either too scared to, to do or, or not skilled enough to do. Like, uh, for example, the, the guy who did the first parachute stunt, he jumped out of a plane without a parachute and caught onto another guy who had a parachute. That's pretty hairy. I'd like to pull something like that off someday. The Manta Rays continue their dominance over the Detroit Tiger Fish with a 15-5 victory in Beach Bout. Our teams will really have to strategize to win this next game. It's called King of the Raft, and it requires real teamwork. A pyramid with four eight-foot padded sides is mounted on inner tubes out in the ocean. The center point is a 10-foot pole with a ball attached. When the game begins, our contenders will paddleboard out to meet their male hard bodies waiting in raft. And when our contenders reach their hard body, they will tag them, and all three will swim to the pyramid. They'll mount it and attempt to climb to the top. Now, the first team to reach the summit and pull the ball wins 10 points. Well, our team members appear to be ready, David, for action, so let's get started. Well, Sherry has sounded the whistle, and our teams take to the water. They take to the surf, put those paddle boards in, and you can see they're having a little bit of trouble there. There's the green team, Brenda and Chris, trying to get in, and our red team, the Detroit Tiger Fish. That's Sean and Melissa, and this can be a very tricky part of the race, Allison. Yes, it can, David, because the surf can really cause havoc with that paddle board and tip both contenders off into the water, and it's hard then to get back on. Yeah, you can see Zuma there signaling for his team to get out there, and they've got a big lead. The red team, the Tiger Fish, really paddling well. You see Ripper there telling his team to get over to the right, get over to the right, because the surf is pulling them to the left. This is a very, very difficult paddle out there, but the red team, the Tiger Fish, really doing it well. And you can see all three of them now swimming over to the pyramid, and they've got another big decision to make here. They have to get on that pyramid and determine what the strategy is going to be to pull themselves up on the raft. It's tough. It, they need team effort because it's slippery, it's steep, and it's pretty high. Well, here come the manta rays on the other side of the raft. This could be close, but Zuma has gotten the footing for Sean, and they didn't falter at all. They've got it, and they're going to pick up the points here, and they are kings of the raft. Well, let's take a look at the instant replay. And here we have Sean and Melissa doing an incredible job on the paddleboard. You can see that they really are moving in sync. Well, fresh out of the surf, we just caught up with the Detroit Tiger Fish. We got Sean, Melissa, and Zuma. This is a big win for them, and a couple key points led them to this win. Number one was the paddle out. Melissa, tell us a little bit about going out there. Well, it was pretty good because me and Sean are both surfers, so we got our stroke down. Very quick. The other key, I think, is the efficiency once you got on that pyramid. Any strategy to getting you two up there? Well, we decided whoever got on the pyramid first was going to help the other one get up. And then the other one was going to help the other one get to the ball. And we, it worked out really well. Ten points to the Tiger Fish. Let's yeah. go take a look at the scoreboard. Well, the Tiger Fish attacked the surf and picked up ten points as they sank the Manta Rays and raced to become king of the raft. The Manta Rays, however, are still the leader of the pack with 72 points to Detroit's 41. Are you willing to walk the plank? Our teams are armed and all fired up, ready to take aim. This daring contest is next on Beach Clash. Welcome back as we continue with more exciting Beach Clash competition. Walk the plank is the next game up, and our team members are definitely under fire. Well, the game takes place in this pool right here. A foam and vinyl wrap pole is set in the water, and team members will attempt to cross the pool while dodgeballs are being thrown at them by the opposite team. Now, our team's rewarded five points for each member successfully reaching the opposite side. Well, our teams are ready, so let's fire away. Well, it looks like Milwaukee's going to walk the plank first, and Brenda's up, and she gets nailed right away by Sean. That's going to hurt. And here goes Sandy. Sandy going across. She gets hit in the foot, but makes it across. And now Chris Brophy. And look at those. He <laughs> tries to get on, but just wipes on the pole. That pole's also wet, slippery, and ripper as well. Can't make it across. So only one gets across for the Milwaukee Manta Rays. A good job by Detroit. And here's the instant replay. And there's Ripper being hit, and... 
into the water. Only five points for the Milwaukee Manta Rays. Much more fun to see it in slow motion as they wipe. And now Detroit going across the plank. They have to defend Zuma going across. And now he decides to just jump off. He lost his balance. No points there. And here comes Breeze. She gets hit once. But look at her maintain the balance. It's like she's walking on a balance beam very easily. She gets hit in the leg again. But what she maintains. Ration. Unbelievable. Five points there for Detroit. And here comes Melissa. Melissa concentrating those balls coming right at her one Christopher throwing one now oh, nails rip her nails her in the foot and she's gone and there goes Sean and no chance for him unbelievable well they pick up five points as well well the Milwaukee Manor Rays celebrate as they hold off the Detroit Tiger fish to five points and keep it at a 5-5 tie yeah here we see Sean Graham's strategy of trying to get across quick but a little bit too slippery and he hits the dunk a five ball tie for the Tiger fish and the Manor Rays uh, our hard bodies, Breeze and Sandy, were the only two who stayed on the plank. Do you guys say, share the same secret? Just staying steady on there. It was extra slippery this time, but you know, I did it. You both did. But Melissa, wow, you got nailed. What a hit. How did that feel? Oh, it hurt, and I'm definitely getting a bruise out of that one. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa Cross made quite a splash as she tried to walk the plank. But as you can see, this adventurous lady is right at home in the water. I have an interest in marine biology because I grew up part of the year in Michigan on the lakes and then the rest of the year in the Florida Keys with my parents. So I was always grew up like snorkeling and scuba diving and environment conscious. I like competition because I think it's really healthy and it keeps you just like striving to be the best. Most embarrassing moment was my freshman year in college. We were doing a big cheerleading mount and I did a flip out of it and my partner didn't catch me and I landed on the floor in front of like everyone, the whole stadium. Well, the Tiger Fish and Manta Rays have both walked the plank and stepped away with five points each. We call this next game Surf War and we hope the force is with one of our teams. The game is essentially tug of war, made harder because it's played in the surf. The rope has small red and green flags designating our two teams. Now, each team will try to pull its opponent's flag past the red buoy. The game consists of two 45-second heats. Five points are awarded to the winner of each heat for a maximum win of 10 points. Well, it looks like our two teams are almost at the end of their rope. So let's play their floor. And there goes the whistle, and our teams are off. Now, two things you want to look for in this event, the surf war. One is they have to dig in really tough in that sand and pull really hard. And secondly is to try to avoid the surf as much as possible, Allison. David, the surf just makes this event almost impossible because it actually lifts the contenders up off of the sand, and they have no gripping. Yeah, as soon as they get position here in this tug-of-war battle, along comes a wave and knocks them back. But they seem to be holding on, and it's a really even spread match here both teams pulling very hard there you see the manta rays there's chris egging the team on trying to get everybody going they're both yelling at one another to try and do it and the uh, clock is winding down here and no one seems to have the advantage as of, as of yet there it is the whistle's blown and it's a draw and as you see the replay there's ripper there's brenda pulling really tight for manta rays but to no avail you can see the same is true of course for the detroit tiger fish Tough competition. And that is the second whistle, which indicates the second heat of Surf Wars. And Sherry has the best view there on the beach. You can see both teams desperately needing these five points that this heat will bring. 45 seconds to get it here, and here comes the surf, Allison, to knock them all down again. It's going to drag them right back in the shore, and before they can get their footing, pull them all the way back out again. It's really hard to get your footing in this surf. Absolutely. Three things are real important here. Footing, teamwork, and, of course, avoiding the surf at all costs if they can. And they're trying to do just that. The clock running down, both trying hard to get their flag over the center. Seems like a very even competition still. Yeah, it is, and it looks like the surf's going to be the winner here today. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> looks like a stalemate. Sherry's got a good view at it. And there is the whistle, and it's a stalemate. No winner here today in Surf War. Here's the instant replay. And we can see Sandy and Ripa getting nailed by the waves. Well, here with our two female contenders, Detroit, Milwaukee, of course, Brenda here, Melissa here. Listen, ladies, this was tough. This was tough. We had a complete draw. Tell us what the biggest problem was. Was it the surf? The surf. The minute you get a footing, all of a sudden a wave will come in and just sweeps off your feet. 
Yeah, no so way it, went, to fight. it went back and forth. I know you, I saw you get your footing in there, right. Brenda, and then pull and... No way to fight it. No way to fight the surf. And they were a great team, but... Well, I guess the, the ocean is the winner in this one. It's a draw, Milwaukee, Detroit. Let's go to the scoreboard for the results. Well, the surf war between the Detroit Tiger Fish and the Milwaukee Manta Rays ends in a draw, but Milwaukee remains out in front, leading Detroit 77 to 46 here on Beach Clash. Up next, our final event, Crash and Burn, and it's still anybody's game. Welcome back to Beach Clash as we begin our final round of competition with Crash and Burn. Well, in this event, we bring back the hill climb, add the monkey bar, cross into the body roll, down to the surf for a kayak trip, and head out to the Wave Runner Slalom. Paddleboards bring us back to shore for the sand crawl and end with the swing pool finish. Sound complicated? It is. The winner gets 20 points plus an additional point for every second they are ahead of their competitor. Waiting for the whistle, the beginning of Crash and Burn. There we go, and you can see Sean in red and Steve Fortunato, the male alternate, there for the Manta Rays in green. We'll more on that later as they get over the hill climb and head toward the monkey bars. There goes Sean, a good start on the monkey bars as he heads down to the body roll. Steve not far behind, though, and Sean is going to yank his teammate out as she tags, and the hard bodies are off and into the surf, and Steve also into the surf, and here comes one of the more difficult parts of Crash and Burn, Allison. That's right, David. The kayak part of this uh, event is very difficult because it's so hard to get over the surf. The surf can tip the kayak, both members will be into the water, and then it's tough to get back in again. And look how big the surf is. And you can see right there, both teams having trouble. You can see that uh, Ripper having trouble falling out, Zuma also falling out, and that's what I was getting at. The surf can dominate this part of Crash and Burn. Now, Crash and Burn, a very, very, <laughs> check that out. There goes Breeze, she takes a wipe. And these two are actually very good at kayaking, so it just goes to show how tough that surf is. Absolutely. You can see now Ripper and Sandy in the green kayak gotten past the surf line, and they're in a great groove making their way to the next event in Crash and Burn, and that is the Wave Runner Slalom. I need to add here the Manta Rays, 77 points going into the Crash and Burn. Tigerfish, 46, and that means it's anybody's game here. Whoever takes home Crash and Burn with about 12 to 15 second advantage can win the whole day's events here. And let's not forget, David, that our winning team will take home a pair of mountain bikes and AM, FM cassette radios will be awarded to their competitors. Of course, our top teams of the year will be competing for $10,000 and a Hawaiian holiday. Well, there you see Ripper making his way over to the Wave Runner and Zuma and Breeze still on their way over there. And there goes Ripper now into the Wave Runner slalom and he's got a really sizable lead here for the Manta Rays. Well, David, Ripper is really a pro on the uh, Wave Runner, too, so this is not a problem for him in this part of the course. Yeah, Ripper, at any of the water events, Ripper has excelled throughout uh, the day and in past events as well. Look at him go through that slalom. Now, I mentioned earlier a little bit about Steve Fortunato. I need to say that uh, Chris Brophy hurt himself in warm-ups, and so Steve Fortunato took over for the Manta Rays, and that happens a lot here on Beach Clash. The competition gets hard, and now we're looking at Zuma as he jumps onto his Wave Runner, but right as he's jumping on, Ripper jumping off to the paddleboard, so a great lead for the Manta Rays. It looks like they're going to hold their place unless something else happens. And here's Sherry, our referee, watching to make sure that everything goes okay. And now Zuma on his Wave Runner. He's making it through the slalom, and there is the paddleboard team of Ripper and Sandy. They've been excellent in the water. They got a good groove, and Zuma really trying his hardest. Back to the paddleboard. You can see what's going on here. They're trying their hardest to get in. They can. You can see Ripper looking kind of behind his shoulder to see the progress that Zuma's been making on the Wave Runner, but he's got a lot to do to catch up. And here's Zuma. He knows he's way behind and trying to catch up and almost missing a buoy there, but going back around to make it. Yeah, sometimes you really are in a hurry to get to that finish, and uh, you, you cut a few corners there. And there goes Zuma. He jumps off the Wave Runner, and he's now going to his paddleboard. And there's Breeze. She's got a smile on her face because she knows she's got a tough road in front of her, but she's always a great competitor. And here comes Sandy, and Sandy catches a wave, and she hits Brenda. And the Manta Rays are looking like they are going to walk away with Crash and Burn and the day's events. And there is... Oh, there's some good, good sportsmanship. You saw there Melissa Absolutely. knowing knowing that she was going to lose this one, but still high-fying Brenda as she hits to the sand crawl, and she's going to now go down to the swing pool finish, and it looks like Milwaukee is going to clinch, crash, and burn, and they do. There's Brenda celebrating her win. And a 
of course, we can see the uh, second clock ticking away here as uh, every point added to uh, the winners. Absolutely. Here comes Breeze, Zuma. They're uh, kind of paddling in there. They're waiting for a, a wave to take them as the celebration continues on shore with the manta rays. No wave to be found. They're, oh, and a little late. They're already off the board. Yeah, she just dumped the paddle board, decided to swim in herself and tag Melissa. And that's exactly what she does. Here's Breeze. She tagged Melissa, and now Melissa's going to hustle. Great competitors here, always really into the competition. Don't want to give up. They know they're behind. They know they've actually lost this one, but they still want to finish with a good attitude and a good, strong finish is what they're giving us here. Detroit Tiger Fist, as she goes under the sand crawl, and the crowd cheering her on. She's doing a great job, Allison. Yes, she is. It's always nice to see real athletes who will finish a race the best they can. And here looks like something very fun. I'd like to try this later. The swing pool finish. And both teams done. But the manta rays are the story here today in Crash and Burn. As we take a look back, we can really see a crucial moment in this event where Zuma and Breeze just could not recover the time lost when their kayak went over. Here with the winners of Crash and Burn and of the entire contest, the Milwaukee Manta Rays. And it could have gone either way here. Now, going into this event, you guys had a slight lead, but you never know in Crash and Burn. And we had a, a problem, well, the other team had a problem with their kayak, Sandy, and you guys took advantage of that. Absolutely. We got out there, we did it, we did it real fast, and we did it well, and we made it. She, 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 is, she knows what she wants to talk about, and she knows how to paddle. <laughs> she knows how to paddle in. Now, once they got back, you had a longer run, because they ended up way down the beach. Longer run, but hey, they gave me a really great head start, and I was cooking. Yes. Excellent, excellent. A big win for Milwaukee. Yes. Let's go to that scoreboard, look at the results of the Milwaukee win. Big win for Milwaukee here, 20 points for the win, another one point for each of the 60 seconds in that margin of victory. And then the final score, you can see Milwaukee, a blowout, 157 to 46 over Detroit. Well, it's been a very exciting day, and everyone was fantastic. We'd like to thank both our teams, the Detroit